Welcome to Hexby Shed, and this is just a short update on this chuck that I made a few weeks ago, which has been a very popular video. You might have seen it, it's a four jaw with a Morse Taper 3 back plate, and I used a wheel bearing from a Ford Focus Mark 1. I think I said on the video a Fiesta Mark 1, but it's actually a Focus Mark 1. And I had a few comments and concerns about it actually. Um, and those were, what was the run out? Because I didn't show you the run out. And secondly, because I pressed this shaft into the bearing, did it make the bearings too tight? Well, I can respond to that one. Yeah, they are a little bit tight maybe, but it's got two heavy oil seals either side of the bearing. So I can't tell how much is oil seal and how much is perhaps the inner of the bearing expanded slightly because I pressed it in with a two and a half thou fit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up in the tailstock and I'll put a DTI on it and we'll just see what the run out is. To be honest, I've not checked the run out on this chuck. I pressed it together, put it in the tailstock, made the video and then I went on to another job. I'm in two minds about it really. It could be good, it could be bad. It'll be bad. But I'm not optimistic overall. I'm not. I used a precision bearing. It was a car bearing. God, you could be annoying. Well, if you're going to be like that then, I'm going. Right, he's gone. Let's get on with it. I'll set it up. If it's within two thou, I'll be happy. Right, we'll give it a spin now. Is it rubbish? Go away. 0.06 of a millimetre. It's not the easiest thing to set up without a reflection, but hopefully you can see that. As I turn that, Right, that's hundredths of a millimetre, so by and large it's five one hundredths of a millimetre, which is about two thou. There is a bit of a flick on it there. See that flick somewhere? There. Now whether that's just the bearing being a bit grumpy, I don't know. But it's running around about two thou. Eccentric. Now if I pull on it, I, there's not much free play, look. That's pretty good from that point of view. It's not that easy to clock at the front because obviously the jaws interrupt the front plate. And if I clock at the back here, well all I'm really doing is clocking the back face of the uh, back plate. And then there's the screw holes in it. Actually I've just got onto this face near the root inboard of the securing screws. So let's have a look at that then. I've set it to zero. Look. That's much smoother than it was running on this surface, actually. And there we go. It's eight one hundredths of a millimetre, which is 3.2 thou. Now, it doesn't tell you what this is doing on the front here. It's only a confidence builder. My turning might not be parallel on this plate. But that's quite smooth, actually. So there you go. You can see what the run out is folks, the people who asked, and what the bearing's doing. Now, as a future project, somebody suggested to me I might like to drill some indexing holes around here, uh, maybe 24 holes, and I've got that in mind at some point. And the other exciting thing about this chuck is because it's a Morse Tabor 3, I can put it in the headstock for no practical reason whatsoever, unless I want to use it for indexing. Pointless. <laughs> Doing it because I can. <laughs> I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.